All right, so Joe Biden just did a speech and we are gonna go through it uh, and watch it together. I have not seen it yet. I wanted to watch it for the first time with you uh, and then I'll commentate on anything that I feel I need to comment commentate on. So let's get started, let's watch it. My name is Justin Douglas, newly elected county commissioner to Dauphin County, Pennsylvania. I took my oath of office just a few days ago. I observed the peaceful transfer of power, even in an election where my victory came by the narrowest of margins. There was already a dig right there on the peaceful transfer of power. Donald Trump represents a clear and present danger to that democracy. His lies about the election, encouraging his supporters to violently stop the peaceful transfer of power, make him unfit to be president. Now, we know that that never happened. We know that Donald Trump never called for violence. We saw the tweets. We saw the speech. Never once did he do anything like that. I'm proud to be here today supporting a president who has been strong and unequivocal in his defending American democracy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Defending a democracy by stealing the election. He had to steal it to take it away from the clear and present danger. It is my honor to welcome to the stage the president of the United States, Joe Biden, and the first lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden. I'm sure he's been instructed, stick to the prompter. Joe, please, for the love of everything, please, please, please stick to the prompter. I hope he goes off prompter a lot. Here we go, everybody. The topic of my speech today is deadly serious, and uh, I think it needs to be made at the outset of this campaign. In the winter of 1777, it was harsh and cold as the Continental Army marched to Valley Forge. General George Washington knew he faced the most daunting of tasks, to fight and win a war against the most powerful empire existent in the world at the time. His mission was clear, liberty, not conquest, freedom, not domination, national independence, not individual glory. America made a vow, never again would we bow down to a king. Months ahead would be incredibly difficult, but General Washington knew something in his bones. Something about the spirit of the troops he was leading. Something, something about the soul of the nation he was struggling to be born. In his general order, he predicted, and I quote, with one heart and one mind, with fortitude and with patience, they would overcome every difficulty, the troops he was leading. And they did. This army that lacked blankets and food, clothes and shoes, this army, whose march left bloody bare footprints in the snow, this ragtag army made up of ordinary people, their mission, George Washington declared, was nothing less than a sacred cause. That was the phrase he used, a sacred cause. Freedom, liberty, democracy, American democracy. I just visit the grounds of Valley Forge. I've been there a number of times since the time I was a Boy Scout. You know, it's the very site that I think every American should it tells the story of the pain and the suffering and the true patriotism it took to make America. Today, we gather in a new year, some 246 years later, just one day before January 6th, a day forever shared in our memory because it was on that day that we nearly lost America. We nearly lost America. You're telling me that I don't know how many people were there. Let's say it was a thousand, a thousand people just about destroyed the most powerful country in the world. We're not worried about other militaries. We're not worried about, you know, this, like our foreign policy coming back to bite us in the ass. But no, a thousand protesters that went peacefully protesting on January 6th that had Fed and Antifa and Black Lives Matter activists inciting things and instigating what was going on and police pushing people into the Capitol, that almost destroyed America. Give me a fucking break. Today, we're here to answer the most important of questions. Is democracy still America's sacred cause? No, it's not because we only have two parties and those two private parties get to decide who we get to choose. So that is not a democracy. That is not democratic. We're forced every single election cycle to choose the lesser of two evils. This is not rhetorical, academic, or hypothetical. Whether democracy is still America's sacred cause is the most urgent question of our time. And it's what the 2024 election is all about. The choice is clear. Donald Trump's campaign is about him, not America, not you. Donald Trump's campaign is obsessed 
with the past, not the future. He's willing to sacrifice our democracy, put himself in power. Our campaign is different. For me and Kamala, our campaign is about America. It's about you. It's about every age and background that occupy this country. It's about the future. Okay, because I don't know if you've looked around, but this country right now is pretty much fucked. They see something different than we do, I guess. And our campaign is about preserving and strengthening our American democracy. By stealing an election. Okay, got it. You steal an election, you're all about democracy. Three years ago tomorrow, we saw with our own eyes the violent mob storm the United States Capitol. It was almost in disbelief as you first turned on the television. See, painting it as a violent mob. There was a much more violent mob that attacked in May and actually burnt security quarters at the White House, almost burned down a church, injured many uh, Capitol Police and Secret Service. But why don't we hear about that? But January 6th, on the other hand, because that was a coordinated effort with the feds and with the government, well, that was a violent, violent act. For the first time in our history, insurrectionists had come to stop the peaceful transfer, transfer of power in America. First time, smashing windows, shattering doors, attacking the police. Outside, gallows were erected as the MAGA crowd chanted, hang Mike Pence. Inside, they hunted for Speaker Pelosi. Man, their January 6th is completely different than the one that we've seen on video. Completely different. I, I am just wondering if he's going to say that five police officers died. The House was chanting as they marched through and smashed windows. Where's Nancy? Over 140 police officers were injured. Jill and I attended the funeral of police officers who died as a result of the events of that day. There we go. No police officers died as a result of that day. None. Now, they're trying to pin a suicide. And we know that Sitnik died of a stroke that had nothing to do with January 6th. And the Capitol Police even say that. But they still want to make you think that five police officers died that day. They want to make you think that it's worse than it was. This right here is all they have. They don't have anything that's going to get the American people on board. So this is what you're going to hear for all of 2024 is them going against Trump and his supporters and calling them extremists. They're going to use January 6th to try to win this election. Now it's going to get his base fired up for sure. But I'm telling you, this is an incitement of violence because they're painting American citizens that support Donald Trump as right-wing extreme domestic terrorists. And that is dangerous language. Because of Donald Trump's lies, they died because these lies brought a mob to Washington. He promised it would be wild, and it was. He told the crowd to fight like hell, and all hell was unleashed. He promised he would write them everything they did. He would be side by side with them. Then, as usual, he left the dirty work to others. He retreated to the White House. As America was attacked from within, Donald Trump watched on TV in the private small dining room off, my oval, oval, off the Oval Office. The entire nation watched in horror. The whole world watched in disbelief. And Trump did nothing. Members of his staff, members of his family, Republican leaders who were under attack for the, at that very moment, pled with him. Act. Call off the mob. Imagine had he gone out and said, stop. It wouldn't have stopped because it wasn't Trump supporters that were doing it. It was feds. It was Antifa. It was people like that. You see many videos of Trump supporters trying to stop them from breaking windows. You've got video of police shoving people through the doors. And then you have video of police firing pepper bombs and everything into the crowd, hitting a, one guy in the face and completely destroying his face, like inciting them, pushing an elderly lady down the stairs, just trying to incite them. And still, Trump did nothing. It was among the worst derelictions of duty by a president in American history. An attempt to overturn a free and fair election by force and violence. A record 81 million people voted for my candidacy. Oh my God. A record 81 million votes were created for your candidacy. You didn't win that shit. You did not win that election, Joe Biden. Period. You did not. Trump lost the popular vote by 7 million. Trump's claims about the 2020 election never could stand up in court. Trump lost 60 court cases. 60. Trump lost the Republican control states. Trump lost before a Trump appointed judge and Trump lost before the United States Supreme Court. Because those were never actually looked into. They did not do any 
due diligence or look into anything. They just said there wasn't enough evidence. Trump lost recount after recount after recount and state after state. But in desperation and weakness, Trump and his MAGA followers went after election officials who, in, who ensured your power as a citizen would be heard. These public service had their lives forever upended by attacks and death threats for simply doing their jobs. In Atlanta, Georgia, a brave black mother and her daughter, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, were doing their jobs electing workers until Donald Trump and his MAGA followers targeted and threatened them, forcing them from their homes and unleashing racist vitriol on them. Uh, can we see the proof of that, please? That sounds like a juicy Smollier incident if I've ever heard one. Let's see evidence that that actually happened. Because they say all this shit, and they never back it up with any kind of proof, ever. Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, was just hit with a $148 million judgment for cruelty and defamation that he inflicted against them. Other state and local elected officials across the country face similar personal attacks. In addition, Fox News agreed to pay a record eight, $787 million dollars for the lies they told about voter fraud. My personal opinion on that matter is that Dominion paid Fox News to shut up because they're like, look, you're going to upset the balance of the elections. I think it went the other way. I don't think Fox paid them. I think they paid Fox, to be honest, because if Fox News was a legit news organization, they believed in that story and they believed it was true. They would have went through the court process. They would have let them sue us. We've got the, we've got the data. But no, they backed down over a lawsuit, a news company. Bullshit. I don't buy it. Let's be clear about the 2020 election. Trump exhausted every legal avenue available to him to overturn the election. Every one. But the legal path just took Trump back to the truth that I had won the election and he was a loser. And knowing how his mind works now, he had one, he had one act left, one desperate act available to him. The violence of January the 6th. And since that day, more than 1,200 people have been charged for their assault on the Capitol. Nearly 900 of them have been convicted or pled guilty. Collectively to date, they have been sentenced to more than 840 years in prison. See, and that's, that's so messed up. That is so messed up that people are still in prison for that, for nothing, for doing nothing, for walking around inside the Capitol. And what's Trump done? Instead of calling them criminals, He's called these, these insurrectionists patriots. And he promised to pardon them if he returns to office. Trump said that there was a lot of love on January the 6th. The rest of the nation, including law enforcement, saw a lot of hate and violence. One Capitol Police officer called it a medieval battle. That same officer called vile rape, was called vile racist names. He said he was more afraid in the capital of the United States of America, in the chambers, than when he was fighting as a soldier in the war in Iraq. I mean, are you kidding me? And the thing is, the sad thing is people are going to buy this. His hardcore base, that he doesn't have a big one, but his hardcore base is going to buy this. That this soldier suffered more on January 6th than in war. Well, what, what did he do in war? Maybe he was just like, maybe he was stationed in Germany behind a desk or something, but who knows? Come on, man. I'm trying to rewrite the facts of January 6th, Trump is trying to steal history. The same way he tried to steal the election. But he, we knew the truth because we saw it with our own eyes. So it wasn't like something, a story being told. No, no, no. You didn't see it with your own eyes. You saw what they wanted you to see. They didn't show you the inside. They didn't show you the other side of the Capitol at all, where there was nothing going on, where there were people that were just being let in. The side that had it going on was the side where the police were inciting them. That's the side that they focused on. You never saw in the J6 uh, hearing any of the, the police stuff where police are firing things into the crowd. All you saw was what they wanted you to see and they took the most violent parts of it to, to create their narrative. So a lot of people didn't see what really happened. A lot of people haven't seen yet the police letting people in. They haven't seen them walking around calmly inside the Capitol, waving to police, talking to police, taking pictures in the, in the Senate chamber or wherever it was, uh, the, the uh, shaman guy. Just they're, they're guiding him around, take him in, take, let him take pictures. Like they're escorting him around. And Tucker was the one that released that. But you think that Democrats are going to believe Tucker Carlson? No, they're going to be like, he manipulated that footage. That is not real. We know what really happened. No, you fucking don't. It was on television repeatedly. We saw it with our own eyes. Trump's mob wasn't 
a peaceful protest. It was a violent assault. They were insurrectionists, not patriots. They weren't there to uphold the Constitution. They were there to destroy the Constitution. So you Trump supporters were there to destroy the Constitution. So just so you know, that's what they think of you. Trump won't do what an American president must do. He refuses to denounce political violence. So hear me clearly. I'll say what Donald Trump won't. Political violence is never, ever acceptable in the United States political system. Never, never, never. It has no place in a democracy. None. Unless it's our side. You know, when we saw in 2016, all of these people saying that Donald Trump stole the 2016 election. Russia helped him steal it. No proof, no evidence. That's okay. But this, you know, is not okay. And they're going to say, well, but that, you know, in 2016, there was no violent, like, you know, a protest or anything like that. There wasn't on January 6th either. You can't be pro-insurrectionist and pro-American. Well, yeah, you can actually. The people that were there legitimately, peacefully protesting, were protesting because the election was being stolen. They were patriots. If you want to paint the feds and Antifa and stuff like that as insurrectionists, go for it. Because they're the ones that were doing all of the bad stuff. And then maybe some Trump supporters actually joined in once they were incited. I don't know. We'll never know at this point who was a Fed and who wasn't. They're going to blur the faces before they release the footage because we can't have these faces being seen. There's some assets in there that we can't reveal the identity of because they'll be in danger. Okay, so we'll blur the footage. We'll blur the faces, which only protects the Feds, only protects their narrative, and does nothing to exonerate the innocent people that were caught up in this that are sitting in jail right now. Trump and his MAGA supporters not only embrace political violence, but they laugh about it. At his rally, he jokes about an intruder whipped up by the big Trump lie, taking a hammer to Paul Pelosi's skull and echoing the very same words used on January 6th. Where's Nancy? And he thinks that's funny. He laughed about it. What a sick... I I think it's despicable, seriously. I was just repressive for any person to say that. But to say it to the whole world listening, when I was overseas, anyway. (laughs) He almost went off script, damn it. I wish he would have kept going. Go off script, Joe. Go off script. Go off script. Come on, you can do it. Go off script. He's threatened the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff with the death penalty. Says he should be put to death because the chairman put his oath to the Constitution ahead of his personal loyalty to Trump. This is coming from a president who called, when he visited his cemeteries, called dead soldiers suckers and losers. Remember that? Joe, you're not an actor. So stop with the little whatever that was. I don't know if that was him holding in a, a, a fart or something, but whatever that was, Joe, don't do it again. You're not a good actor. He talks about the blood of America is being poisoned, echoing the same exact language used in Nazi Germany. He proudly posts on social media the words that best describe his 2024 campaign, quote, revenge, quote, power, and quote, dictatorship. There's no confusion about who Trump is, what he intends to do. I placed my hand on our family Bible, and I swore an oath on the very same steps of the Capitol. (laughs) Grim, add some really nice violin music here really quick. Okay, let's get the, let's get the moment uh, sad. Let's, let's add some rain. Okay, let's make it rain a little bit. Let's all come in close, okay? Um, I don't know if "Kumbaya" is a uh, um, a copyrighted song, but let's just let's just get let's just create the mood, okay? Create this this mood. All right. Here we go. I place my hand on my family Bible, and I took an oath to this Constitution to uphold and protect it at all costs. All costs, I say. I um, like to be able to, anyway. Thank you, Joe. Just 14 days after the attack on January the 6th. The attack. I looked out over the capital city whose streets were lined with National Guard to prevent another attack. Where was he looking out of? Like what window was he looking out of? Just out of curiosity, like fact checkers, please fact check this. I saw strength, your strength, not hyperbole, your strength, your integrity, American strength and integrity, ordinary citizens, state election officials, the American judicial system had put the Constitution first and sometimes at their peril because of them, because of you, the will of the people prevailed, not the anger of the mob or the appetites of one man. When the attack on January 6th happened, 
there was no doubt about the truth. At the time, even Republican members of Congress and Fox News commentators publicly and privately condemned the attack. As one Republican senator said, Trump's behavior was embarrassing and humiliating for the country. But now that same senator and those same people have changed their tune. You think maybe it's because they actually saw more evidence that you were lying, that your side was wrong? People should do that. If people see evidence, they should be willing to change their position. Today, I make this sacred pledge to you. The defense, protection, and preservation of American democracy will remain as it has been the central cause of my presidency. Well, it's not really a democracy. It's supposed to be a republic. And when they say we live in a democracy uh, and, and our votes matter means nothing to me. And we have no other choice but those two pieces of shit in a private system, private debates, private parties, everything's private. We've been blessed so long with a strong, stable democracy. It's easy to forget why so many before us risked their lives and strengthened democracy what our lives would be without it. Democracy means having the freedom to speak your mind, to be who you are, to be who you want to be. Democracy is about being able to bring about peaceful change. Democracy is how we've opened the doors of opportunity wider and wider with each successive generation, not with, notwithstanding our mistakes. But if democracy falls, we'll lose that freedom. It's already fallen. It has already fallen. So... We'll lose the power of we, the people, to shape our destiny. If you doubt me, look around the world. Travel with me as I meet with other heads of state throughout the world. Look at the authoritarian leaders and dictators Trump says he admires. He out loud says he admires. I won't go through them all, it'll take too long. Look, remember how he refers, what he, where he refers to what he calls love letter exchanges between he and the dictator of North Korea? Those women and men out there in the audience who ever fought for the American military, did you ever believe you'd hear a president say something like that? His admiration for Putin. I could go on and look at what these autocrats are doing to limit freedom. I happen to admire Putin as well. So Putin has been amazingly controlled with what's going on over there. He was put in a position that he had to take action and the way he has done it has avoided civilian deaths. I don't think there's been any on his side because of his actions. I commend him for the way he's done because the United States, Israel, they just go in and just indiscriminately drop bombs. They don't care about civilians. They don't care that's collateral damage. They don't give a shit. Putin has not done that at all. The limiting freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom to assemble, women's rights, LGBTQ rights, people are going to jail, so much more. It's true, the push and pull of American history is not a fairy tale. Every stride forward in America is met with ferocious backlash many times from those who fear progress and those who explore. I mean, at least he only said LGBTQ. He left out the T. That's good, right? That was intentional. He left out the T. Unlike other nations on earth, America is not built on ethnicity, religion, geography. We're the only nation in the history of the world built on an idea, not hyperbole, built on an idea. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal. It's an idea declared in the declaration, created in a way that we viewed everybody as equal and be, should be treated equal throughout their lives. We've never fully lived up to that. We have a long way to go. But we've never walked away from the idea. We've never walked away from it. And I promise you, I will not let Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans force us to walk away. Uh, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I, I honestly believe this is going to cause so much violence in 2024. And I feel like that's exactly what they want. That is the talk of an extremist right there. Like, what is the difference between what he's saying and what Trump is saying. I'm going to protect democracy by stealing democracy, by taking my opponent off of the ballots, by making it so my opponent can't run, so that the will of the people is not actually the will of the people. Let's fight racism with racism. Let's fight sexism with sexism. Let's fight ideologies with ideologies. It does not work, but that is their playbook. I do not see anything good happening in 2024 leading up to this election. I think it's going to get really bad personally. So I'll keep my commitment to be president for all of America, whether you voted for me or not. I've done it for the last three years and I'll continue to do it. Together, we can keep proving that America is still a country that believes in decency, dignity, honesty, honor, truth. We still believe that no one, not even the president, is above the law. We still believe, the vast majority of us still believe that everyone deserves a fair shot at making it. We're still a nation that gives hate no safe harbor. I tell you from my experience working with leaders around the world, and I mean this sincerely, 
not a joke, that America is still viewed as the beacon of democracy for the world. I can't tell you how many, how many world leaders, and I know all of them, virtually all of them, grab my arm in private and say, you can't win. Tell me. No, my country will be at risk. Think of how many countries, Tommy, you know that are on the edge. Oh, my God, come on. Okay, again, fact checkers, please, fact checkers, if you would, please. Gather the facts, put those in the, uh, uh, well, I guess he said they did it, do it in private behind the scenes. Say, please don't let Donald Trump back in there. We're in danger. We still believe in we the people. And that includes all of us, not some of us. Let me close with this. Okay, wait a minute, Grim. I want you to, for this final story, let's recreate the mood again, because I have a feeling he's just going to really pander here. Let's get some uh, sad music, uh, maybe some rain. Let's make it look like old footage from the 1700s. Okay, uh, and give it maybe some, you know, some some crackling or whatever uh, in the audio. But let's here we go. Let's let's create this moment for Joe Biden. Let's ha- let him end his speech, his pandering speech, his rhetoric with a, a beautiful last moment. And a coal winter of 1777, George Washington and his American troops of Valley Forge waged the battle on behalf of a revolutionary idea that everyday people like where I come from and the vast majority of you not a king or a dictator, that everyday people can govern themselves without a king or a dictator. In fact, in the rotunda of the Capitol, there's a giant painting of General George Washington, not President Washington, and he is resigning his commission as Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. A European king at the, at the time said after he won the revolution, now's the time for him to declare his kingship. But instead, the mob that attacked the Capitol, waving Trump flags and Confederate flags, Stormed right past that portrait. The image of George Washington gave him no pause, but it should have. The artist who painted that portrait memorialized that moment because he said it was, quote, one of the highest moral lessons ever given to the world, end of quote. George Washington was the height of his power. Having just defeated the most powerful empire on earth, could have held on to power as long as he wanted. He could have made himself not a future president, but a future monarch, in effect. And by the way, when he got elected president, he could have stayed for two, three, four, five terms until he died. But that wasn't the America he and the American troops of Valley Forge brought. In America, genuine leaders, democratic leaders with a small d, don't hold on to power relentlessly. Our leaders return power to the people, and they do it willingly, because that's the deal. You do your duty. You serve your country. And ours is a country worthy of, worthy of service, as many Republican presidents and Democratic presidents shown over the years. We're not perfect, but at our best, we face on, we face head on the good, the bad, the truth of who we are. We look in the mirror and ultimately never pretend we're something we're not. That's what great nations do. And we're a great nation. We're the greatest nation on the face of the earth. That's the America I see in our future. We get up. We carry on. We never bow. We never bend. We speak of possibilities, not carnage. We're not weighed down by grievances. We don't foster fear. We don't walk around as victims. We take charge of our destiny. We get our job done with the, people, with the help of the people we find in America who find their place in the changing world and dream and build a future that not only they, but all people deserve a shot at. We don't believe, none of you believe America's failing. We know America's winning. That's American patriotism. If this is winning, I'd rather lose. It's not winning because of Joe Biden. It's winning. This is the first national election since January 6th. Insurrection placed a dagger at the throat of American democracy since that moment. We all know who Donald Trump is. The question we have to answer is, who are we? That's what's at stake. Who are we? In the year ahead, as you talk to your family and friends, cast your ballots, the power is in your hands. After all we've been through in our history, from independence to civil war, to two world wars, to a pandemic, to insurrection, I refuse to believe that in 2024, we Americans will choose to walk away from what's made us the greatest nation in the history of the world. Freedom, liberty, democracy is still a sacred cause. And there's no country in the world better positioned to lead the world than America. That's why I've said it many times. That's why I've never been more optimistic about our future. And I've been doing this a hell of a long time. Just to remember who we are with patience and fortitude with one heart 
We are the United States of America, for God's sake. I mean it. There is nothing. I believe with every fiber, there is nothing beyond our capacity if we act together and decently with one another. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean it. We're the only nation in the world that's come out of every crisis stronger than when we went into that crisis. <clears throat> that was true yesterday. It is true today. And I guarantee you, it will be true tomorrow. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. May God protect our troops from what? We're not at war, right? Are we at war somewhere? God protect our troops. Anyway. Get ready, folks. Buckle up, because 2024, this is all we're going to see. Everything that he has touched is fucked. So this is all he has. Their strategy is to just be anti-Trump and anti-January 6th for his entire campaign. Because, again, it is all they have. So let me know what you think in the comments, but I think that we are going to have a really crazy 2024. If you guys want to come join me on my website and get away from some of the political stuff, go to davidfostervlog.com, sign up for free. That's where I post everything. It's basically my online journal. And that also gets you access to our Discord group where you can come in and you can chat every day. I look forward to seeing you over there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.